Alrighty, so a bit of a change of plan. So we're heading up Mount Wellington. Um, just obviously that last track was pretty cooked. So we could get up that. Weren't really in the mood for a, a bit of a hard slog nursing the bikes up there. So yeah, Mount Wellington, nice high altitude camp spot. Hopefully we get there and there's some spots free. It is Saturday. But this track leading into Mount Wellington is really good. It's a good track, this. I uh, camped up here a few years ago and uh, haven't been back since. So looking forward to getting up, up top here. How good is it? Spectacular. <sighs> Whew. It's a sick track, isn't it?
we got Chinese snacks. These things, these were good last time. I don't think we, we just didn't cook them long enough. So we'll get them crispy. Well, I'm not 100% sure how they're going to go in risotto. Meat's meat, mate. I disagree. And if it can stay on the shelf for multiple years, it's got my tickle approval. <laughs> look how greasy it is. Ah, oh, yeah, look at the oil. Yeah, it's just coming off. Just it. from chopping. Oh, yeah. What a boil it. Oh, so we're in the edge of the Avon. Yeah. We would have gone through the Avon if we continued up that track. I'm pretty sure we are in the Avon. Avon's, yeah, in here. No, we, it's we, like literally the border. We went past the sign that said you're entering the Avon. Oh no, it is. We are in the, the Avon. Avon. Yeah. We're still a way along, aren't we? Do a fair bit of riding today. Don't ha normally. How many normally k's did we do? Nearly 300, I think it was. 300 k's. Don't be shy on the mushrooms. Oh, they expand. Look at that. Look at the fat coming off those. Ooh. That's just burning all the preservatives off. There is rain on its way. Well, Total elevation gain, 6,413 metres. So up and down, up and down, up and Total down. Total descent, 5,000. <laughs> so, it's quite a bit. I will recover by Wednesday <laughs> from today's ride. Really? That's what it says. That rain's starting to kick up a bit more. I went to bed. Woke up at 11.30. Rice is going in. Let's get trying to find the ears. Not even a little. MSG. Legit? Too much. What is it? Oh, it's just stock. Oh. Vegetable or chicken? I don't know. It's got a bit of everything. I think chicken. Oh, looking good. Cook it down, bro. I hate it. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. That sparked up more than I expected. <laughs> oh. The mushrooms are just full of flavour, aren't they? Just soaked it all up. When you doubt, just feed them rice. Well done, mate. Mm. Okay. Cheers. I thought it was that. It's not really soft. Sweet mate, so take us through your setup. You've got the 701. What year is that one? It's a 21. So same right. as mine, yep. I had a new one ordered, got tired of waiting, so I bought this one from South Australia. Okay, so you brought it second hand? Yep, yeah, uh, had three and a half thousand Ks on it. Yep. Dash plate and rear guard and a few other little protection pieces were already on it. I added the little screen, the wind's exhaust, the foot pegs, the heel guards, counter shaft guard. So you've got on the Motos dual venture on the front. How you have you found that tire on this trip? Well, this is the first use of it was brand new when I left home a couple of days ago, but um, so far it's been really good. I've, it's given me no problems on dry bitumen. We haven't tried wet bitumen. Um, downhill in the loose stuff, it's actually quite good on the braking. Steers are right on the loose stuff, so yep. yeah, it's been pretty good. And how do you find the HT, Motoz HT on the back? <sighs> I love the fact that it's lasting forever, but I'm a little bit torn between grip and longevity. I don't think quite the grip's quite there that I prefer. Yep. You get in the loose stuff, it just spins a bit too easy that on the back yeah i like your little rubber setups and i noticed you've put one around the back underneath here on have you done something there or no 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 that's that's the standard one i believe like I've, I've ripped through mine okay <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't like the standard plastic thing i thought it was a bit vulnerable yep um i didn't like running with nothing because you get too much crap yeah. clicking up on your bags yep Yep. Oh, and you've also got the bark buster hand guards on as well yeah they were already on it too i was quite happy with those um Already had the oh yep, you got the raid the raid 
5.9 litre yeah, tank. Yeah, which is a must for these, I think it's, or, or at least some other auxiliary fuel. I just don't think they have enough fuel for decent adventures. Yeah, yeah, for, for, to go out somewhere like where we are, you can't, you can't run the standard fuel tank on these. These sort of trips, I just run spare tubes and levers in there. Yep. Um, and then what bag? So you run so yours in a giant loop? Giant loop, Coyote. It's an old one with a zip. The new ones have got a roll top. Yep. And Krieger. Um, I have a few of these and use them in different configurations, sometimes on the side and on the top. But yep. I found the giant loop is the easiest to pack. It just the shovel thing everything in one bag and it just sits over there nicely and doesn't move around no it's a good setup and you're happy with it is there anything else you're going to do to the bike no i'm pretty happy with it it's um probably just experiment with a different rear tire now yep so you're, you're happy with the 701 no qualms with it no not so far well the usual complaints about you know first gear's too tall top gear's too high yeah yeah uh, too low sorry and uh feels like you're revving a bit hard on the freeway but gear it up anymore and first gear's too tall so i'll just i think i'll just stay with the stock gearing yeah yeah all yeah. right oh, you see and then suspension wise you've done yeah suspension wise i took it to i've got to read the label because i can't remember cruise tune uh so they revalved the rear put on the preload adjuster yep yeah, so that's the x trig preload adjuster yeah, heavier spring and they they have their own kit which uh puts adds compression uh, adjustment so I've got compression adjustment in the bottom of each fork leg now and they change the standard compression adjuster to what they call the flow adjuster which gives it a bit more overall mid-range support you can soften it off for dirt stiffen it up for the road and they're based in Melbourne yeah uh, Bayswater area yep. yep yeah great and yeah like like same with mine Getting the suspension tuned up, particularly when you're hauling gear, makes a world of difference yeah, to these bikes. Yeah. yeah, I rode it for a couple of rides, standard, and yeah, it was okay if you're just cruising, but if you load it up and still want to carry a bit of pace, it wasn't up to the job. Cool, mate. So you're running, see, the uh, Spartan 2 hiking tent? Yeah, I, it's only its second trip out. I changed to this one. I was running a different bag, different tent that wasn't freestanding, so... If you had to move position or whatever, it became a real pain. It required poles to hold it all up and you know, that sort of thing. This thing, it's great. You just run a couple of poles over, everything clips together. It's really easy to assemble and you can unpeg it and pick it up and walk around with it. So. I'm, I'm a massive fan of the the uh, vestibule entry from both sides. I just think the dome yeah. tents, yeah. They're, the, they're the best way to go. Yeah. Unless you, if you go a tent with a... Entry just at the front, it's really hard to get your gear in and out. It's no, a pain correct. in the ass to sleep yeah, in. Yeah, no, you can get in both sides. Yep. And you've got a little bit of dry space to store gear, especially the side you're not using as the entry. Yep. Uh, yeah, no. And it's, it's got the weight on the side there, so 2.4 kilos. So it's, yep. it's on the high, higher weight of a hiking tent, but it's... Correct, yeah. yeah. They do a, a one person, which is a fair bit lighter, but we're on a motorbike, I can, I can afford the weight. To me, it was more how small it packs up. And I wanted something with short poles, yep. alley poles in this. They all pack up nice and short so you can fit it in like a Krieger bag and stuff like that if you have to. Yeah, great. Yeah, so you're happy with it? Yep, yeah, so far, no complaints. Great, perfect. I guess climbing in, if you're a tall person, hands and knees job. That's oh, I think that's just camping life, mate. There's no... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Unless you're hauling a bigger tent around to get in and out of, but then yeah, then you compromise on space and weight. Yep. Great, thank you. So you've gone the hammock, mate, over this trip. How have you found it over the last two nights? Um, pretty good. If you don't have a really good sleeping bag, it'd be pretty cold. Yeah, so um, the temperature is, is your biggest issue. When there was no forecast of rain, it was really nice to just have the bug net on and fall asleep um, watching the stars. <laughs> But yeah, I'd, I'd definitely do it again. It all packs down into one bag, so okay, so it all it's, packs down into that. Yep. It's a uh, Nike brand. They had a pretty good sale on for an um, tarp bug net and hammock. How much? Normally it's like 300, 400 something. I can't remember, 300 something. But it went yeah, okay. down to something that was more reasonable. So that's the 
the actual rain tarp, which covers me completely. Yeah, and you had that rain tarp set up last yep. night because we had some rain. And that's what that top guy rope is, and it's already dry this morning, so I was able to pack it up pretty quick. And you stayed you stayed dry all last night and a bit of wind. Crispy, toasty in my little cocoon. Yeah, and we got down to about 13, 14 degrees, and you've got, what, what sleeping bag are you running in that? Uh, to see the summit. It's a uh, winter sleeping bag though, isn't it? Or Yeah, it's a full down bag. Yeah. Um, there you go, Ascent AC3. Yeah, and it says on the side what temperatures go down uh, to? Minus 18, apparently. Yeah, okay. I would not try that. Yeah. So also, I chucked a uh, climate mat inside here just to give it a bit of girth. That's, yeah, well, I've never seen that before. <clears throat> okay, so you sleep on that. Yeah. And what does that do? Uh, it just sort of creates a bit more of a width across the... The hammock you probably don't need it um yet to try it without but i thought oh and that's designed for the hammock no it's designed for a really lightweight um sleeping um mat. like camping it folds down to the size of about a coke can yep it takes about five breaths to blow up the little pockets here are designed to catch like little loft of the sleeping bag to try and create little pockets of warmth <laughs> i don't buy that for a second yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say that'd be too warm <laughs> to sleep on the ground on that no no exactly right it um I I've never, I've never seen a, a sleeping mat like that. That's, that's interesting. It's it really for hiking, but yeah, it's. It's um, just a weight saving thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, massive weight saving. Thing. I, if I'm ever going to be in a tent, my Xped Sin Nine or the, uh, the new one that Tommy's got as well. I think they call it something else. Oh, this is your sleeping mat. Yep. Yeah, that that is the best mat I've ever had. Yes. Okay, wide. you guys run the Xped. Yeah, no, I'm a couple of guys I've done on trip, gone on trips with. They all run that same mat as well. Yeah, so it's a ripper. Yeah, and they're not too expensive either, are they? No. Compared oh. to. It's the same as a good sleeping bag. You get what you pay for. And the x pillow had to come. That's a monster. It's the best pillow ever. Yeah. And it's so important to have you comfortable at night. Yeah. If you come out this way and you're not comfortable, it's just you get a, a terrible night's sleep and then, yeah, it affects your riding the next day. So, awesome. Love it. Oh, Tommy, 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 back again. Um, so you've gone with a new tent, mate. You've got the uh, Big Angus. Yeah, I went away from a two man uh, sorry single man just to get a bit more size and space now you also update your tent because it went moldy too didn't it yeah thanks for getting that on the public record yes but it's also oh, like I if you to, i forgot to unpack my tent after a trip pulled yeah. it out and it was moldy and I, i've done exactly the same thing and that's why it's important up particularly when you go camping and come home is to pull them out dry them otherwise they go moldy and then they're cooked it's a big agnes uh black tail two Eiffel tent. It's pretty similar to your copper spur, except it's not the ultralight yep. version. It's slightly <laughs> heavier, slightly hardier, because I'm um, rough on gear a bit more than you. Not as not as careful. Uh, it's only the second time I've used it. It's really good, really spacious. Got got heaps of pockets and little storage stuff inside. It's really good. How much? Did, how much did you pay for it? About. 400 bucks. Okay, that's 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 decent for a tent. And how much does it weigh? About 1.8. The uh, big Agnes tents, they're, they're just, they're great tents. Great tents. Cool, mate. And then uh, I see you've gone with some new Enduristan bags. Which uh, which bags did you go with? Those who might have seen it, I broke my last Enduristan Monsoon 3 bags, which are sort of the more entry-level Enduristan bags. These are the Endura Stan Monsoon Evos, the small, so they're 25 litres each, and I thought they were really good, but I had it off yesterday and it's ripped a hole in the side of my left bag where it must have hit a rock, which is really disappointing because this is their first trip out. Yeah, you just don't have any luck with bags, uh, mate, so yeah, that's that sucks. It does. So we'll try and get some duct tape on that because we've obviously got a couple of river crossings to cross today, otherwise, yeah. We can pull that track if, if we're worried about it. No, no, I think it'll, I think it'll hold it, hold up. Okay. We'll just get some duct tape on the middle well, of it. I rode for two hours after it happened yesterday to get here, so... That's really annoying. You think they'd just make it a little bit more stronger material? <clears throat> I think I can probably get it repaired. You, could, you can get it like heat welded. Yeah. Patches. For... We are out of here.
rough old track. There's a cloud. Butcher Country Track. See how this goes. Been looking at this track for a while. I know it's a steep, steep descent down, so should be a good track. Ooh. Down to McAllister River. We're 1500 meters here, and I think we go down to about 200. So, yeah, just steep old descent. So far so good, but have a look at it down here. <laughs> now we drop off the edge, I'd say. Yeah, I reckon we do. That's a pretty steep drop. Is that something dripping from you? Yeah. As soon as I stopped, it just spewed out a bit. Is it? Yeah, that's just water? Yeah, it's just yeah. water.
looks like old Tommy's uh, <laughs> number plate's completely gone now. We've uh, beaten the bikes up, we've dropped them a few times on different sections and... Oh, there he goes, Tommy. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm in a tricky spot. <sighs> you right, mate? Yeah. Oh, yeah, coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. What was the line like here? Yeah. Um, go, go left. <sighs> Stay in the left. Use it as a burn. Yeah. She's not letting us out easy. You all good? Yeah. Just, I lost too much momentum on the corner. Yeah, man. Those little switchbacks are trick. They're really tricky. Anyone got any of that metal? I've got epoxy resin in here. Cool. Do it here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, not no stress. Then, then it's done, and I can just. Fucking, yep. Not supposed to be able to blow through it when it's cold. I can suck through it. Yeah, right, so you just that's all your pressure. Yeah, yep. so like, yeah we're going to just try and block up the little diaphragm in there on the cap because. Yeah, so you're just losing, bugging. you're losing moisture and pressure. Yeah, losing pressure out the radiator, so water's blowing out and it's lower as low as the boiling point, right? Because it's not pressurized, so. Yep. Worried so, so we'll seal this up and then you'll just get a new cap. Correct. It's a throwaway job now. It's handy to have this stuff, the old resin. Absolutely. Easy, Tommy. Easy, Tommy. Get up there, Tommy. Get up there, Tommy. <laughs> The only issue now is if we've got such a pressure lock, it can't breathe, so just keeping an eye on that. So, if it overheats, it could just blow a pipe somewhere else, so just gonna have to keep a real close eye on it, make sure they're not overheating too much. So, the, the bike's been leaking radiator fluid all the trip, so at least he's found out what it is. So, just needs a simple uh, replacement of that cap and that'll be good to go. But yeah, this track is really, uh, it's got some real technical little sections in it, as we just saw there. So we're still at a thousand meters and then we're coming up to running out of track. So it's really gonna just drop in this last section. So. But we still keep climbing. Yeah, duano has gone, he can ride that 701. He's got a lot of experience riding Enduros. Dwayne, so he can absolutely hammer on that bike. I don't even try keeping up with him, no point. <laughs> I'll end up washing off and ended up in a tree if I try to do that. And all of us are really, really tired, so we're just pretty zonked on energy. Uh, just get through this track and get us out of here nice and safe. Fuel up in La Cola and call the trip there, I think. How's she looking? Good. Like my time around the camera to see what I did. Yeah, man. I, I, the wall. Yeah, you went. You took an interesting line. I thought you were going to flip it. <laughs> my uh, back wheels slid right. Yeah, you flicked it and then yeah. The there was an interesting line. Canyonero. It was very Canyonero. That way. Yeah, we go that way. That way will take us down the Caledonia River track. This divides out. Yeah. 
Butcher Country on two ways, but this is the quicker way. And then if you want to go Caledonia River Track, which I don't think we want to do that, <laughs> particularly the the section of Caledonia River Track back up to the Howard High Plains is it's pretty gnarly. I think we are going down now. No, not now, they were just, yeah, starting to get steeper. Oh, yeah. Get them all, eh? Oh shit! So we've all voted that we're just going to try and get the quickest way out and we think the quickest way is going across the McAllister River, doing the river crossing, so, and it's really hot and the water levels are pretty low at the moment, nice and easy one to start us off with. Seven, I believe. <laughs> That's two. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I got way no fire and rocks on me. Ooh. Oh, that was a good one. Oh. I hit that one. It was coming for my face. Oh, God, he can hammer. He can absolutely hammer. This is a good little track in here. Ooh. Gotta go up, yeah. Oh, up there. Yep. Do I 
so this McAllister River track is uh, is pretty good and it's pretty good because the river river height's really quite low so this river can really crank and it's been uh, been cranking for a couple of weeks a couple of months actually so now's it's time over summer for it to calm down a bit perfect time for us to come through it's a great track it's been a great ooh, great final run out of the high country butcher country into McAllister oh I can't really see it oh he's run wide there Jay it's all good <laughs> Is it zipping here now? A taste of victory on our lips. <laughs> Cold beer when we get home. But I tell you what, we are this dust. We've just been eating dust for the last three days. Gonna be coughing it up all next week. Especially me, because I'm out the back filming. All for the greater good though. This one's a bit bigger. Ooh, <laughs> he's going in. Tommy. <laughs> Big rocks. Straight into another one. Ah, this one's a bit longer. Get it, Tommy. That's gonna go the back way. Woo! Be a hole in this one. Look at your face, AJ. <laughs> We're gonna be coughing up dirt. Wow. Dan beats me. He beats me when the camera's off. Tell everyone. <laughs> How's your face? I'm pretty clean because I wear a beard. <laughs> Thanks a lot, gents, for coming along on the trip. It's been an epic day. I think today by far was the has been the best day. Yeah. Those yeah. river crossings, really butcher country, going down it, awesome. I'd I'd happily do that track again. And those river crossings are tame. When the when the McAllister's down, yeah. no dramas, but when that river's up, you wouldn't want to... That, that one where we had to sort of go quite long across the river, I've seen four drives get like water over the bonnet on that one. So, wow. yeah, epic track. Best track of the trip.
not letting us out easy. Never let you out easy. Hey, there she is. Back to Lickola. Alrighty, ladies and gents. That is the end of another three day epic trip in the high country. Man, it's been an awesome, awesome three days of riding. I'll tell you what, that butcher country, McAllister River, by far the best track that we did all weekend. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps spread the love of this video. And I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. Cheers.